Each year I visit client properties around the country. Uh, since 2005, I've been over, on over 600 client parcels in 22 states. Every one of those that come up with a food plot prescription for success each year, what should they plant? From Illinois, Tennessee, Maryland, Delaware, Vermont, all the way over into Colorado, South Dakota, Nebraska, wherever it might be, and certainly the northern areas of Minnesota, upper, upstate uh, Wisconsin, and the UP of Michigan, there's a huge variety that needs to be planted. So one client is not the same as another that might be in a geographical or regional difference, and even neighbors might be different depending on their needs. Each year I come up with a favorite food plot blend, and that's what I'm planting on my own property. And that kind of hits the base. You know, I'm in southwest Wisconsin, so that area is different than northern Wisconsin, UP of Michigan, northern Minnesota, upstate New York, um, and it's different than southern Indiana, central Illinois, southern Ohio. And so I'm kind of hitting a broad range right there. This year it's a little bit different because I have three properties that I'm planting on for myself personally, and so I have three mixes of food plots. The bottom line is, this is really important, food plots should cover your entire hunting season. Um, I'll give you an example, brassicas. If deer are coming onto your property in late December and they're really hitting those brassicas, well, what about October, November? What about the rut? What about your protection of bucks, your ability to protect bucks, advance them to the next age class, even hunt deer that you want to, a certain buck deer in the hunting season, let alone actually uh, trying to make sure that you can thin out the herd if needed um, and have that daily draw on your property all season. So when it comes to planting a food plot and making sure that deer are hitting it each and every day of the season, there's none better than some base of green. And in this case, we're using uh, beans. I have brassica planted in here. I'm gonna put some tillage radish later in the year, which is a, which is a brassica and some oats and some rye too. Um, but this, again, this property is different than my other two, too. Bottom line is, I can take a uh, mix of green, apply that to any property in the country, and we're going to hit all those days of the season just using green. Beans are great. Let's just say we had early planted beans. We're going to have actual soybeans we're bringing into December, and we're hoping to have that extreme cold weather that you're going to come and hit those beans. They might hit them a little bit in the early season. There might be a huge gap in there in October, November, and they might hit them late. So beans alone, not that great. Corn, corn can be outstanding in November, early December, and if it's still staying in December, it can be really good, but what about October, what about September? It's very lacking. Beans and corn, they kind of hit about 60% of the season, 70% of the season. What about the other 30%? Great plantings, great food plot varieties, beans and corn for their respective time slots but there's still some holes. With greens and base of greens, whether you're using beans, peas, oats, rye, wheat, clover, brassicas, you can choose a combination of greens that will hit the entire season. Now, it might not be a 10 out of 10 for the respective time frame that it's in, like beans or corn in their respective time, but it'll leave your deer with something to go to every single day, every single afternoon, of the entire season. Now once I have that green base and I'm planting late season soybeans here, late summer soybeans, so they'll be green in through early November, outstanding attraction by the way, um, but once you have that base of green covered, then I add corn, then I add beans and as far as early planted corn, or early planted beans, now you have that pyramid of food plot where you have the green as a base that can cover everything, then the corn, then the beans and if you have that much space, which I don't, that can be the optimum where you can have all three. So make sure you attack that green first, and that's what we're doing here. Now this property, one of my three, um, first one we're gonna look at and see what I like to plant, what I recommend You know, in this situation is, this is a property we can't use chemicals on. So we've mowed this, we've tilled it, and I'm putting a combination in where on half of this food pot I'll have brassicas, the other half I'll have cereal grains in the form of oats and rye, but the whole base is soybeans. So I have soybeans planted on this entire food plot, That'll be that early season draw, and it'll actually be a really good green source draw all the way through early November. And so what we've done is, you can see here I have some Egyptian wheat. This is a screening that extends to the edge of the field right here. And then out into the field, or right on that transition where we transition from the Egyptian wheat into food plot. So I have brassica coming in right here on this half of the plot, and then I have beans coming in everywhere. There's beans coming in. They're coming in really well. We used our Genesis 3 from RTP Outdoors to plant that, and it's coming in great. Now what I'm doing in uh, early, um, September around Labor Day. I'm adding about 150 pounds of rye over this entire planting. So I put 75 pounds of beans per acre. I put a normal 
per acre blend of brassica on this half. And on this half, in early September, I'll add oats, but then 150 pounds of rye over the entire planting. So rye over everything, beans over everything, and then oats and brassicas on either half. The reason I want that rye and everything because it has a great natural weed suppressant. So when it gets into the spring, it's gonna suppress that weed growth and then we can mow that rye as it gets 20, 24 inches tall, let it settle on the ground, keep those weeds out, suppress the weeds. And then we'll finally till it under in July and we can start the whole process again. I'll flip the oats and the brassica, that way the brassica is not in the same spot two years in a row. And I'll still use that bean base. Last year I used beans, peas, oats, uh, but it's a lot easier. We're just focusing on a heavy mix of uh, beans in this planting. We'll have that high attraction in the early season. And, uh, and then it'll flip over to the brassica and the oats and then that young rye coming in too. That'll be enough to support the deer movement in this location every day of the season. And uh, we look forward to hunting over it during the season because I know with the beans staying green in through November, we're gonna have a great draw. On property two here, we've had to do something a lot different than the first property that we couldn't use chemicals on. This, we couldn't actually work in here on, and uh, start working on our plots till the middle of summer. What we have been able to do here is get two springs on here and eliminate the weeds. We've used our no-till drill to actually seed in the uh, brassica and the soybeans. And so even though we've had this dead thatch, we've been able to cut through the dead thatch. We're planting on these plots because they're brand new. I'm putting a base green mixture of soybeans and brassicas. So we have the brassica, we're hoping that they'll really hit harder towards the late um, late part of hunting season, November, December. And then we have the beans that they should chomp on pretty freely and aggressively all through the end of November if it lasts that. We have a lot of deer on this property, so I'm hoping they last. A lot different than the first property, and this is quite a bit different than the third property we're gonna go to. I'm gonna follow up around Labor Day. This is planted around the first part of August. I'm gonna follow up around Labor Day on both these food plots out here that are in Beans, Nebraska. And I'm gonna come over this with 150 pounds of rye might even add 50 to 100 pounds of oats, but I'm gonna have put a really thick layer so that I can get that thick sod base of cereal grain growing underneath. I only target about five, six, seven, eight inches growth. That's going in about six weeks before our first frost date. And that'll apply that young, fresh forage. It should stay green, especially the rye, all the way through spring. And guarantee that you're gonna be chomping on this in December, January, February, March. When the ground is open and we don't have any snow, they're gonna hit it hard because it'll be the only green thing out here. That rotation will help eliminate some weed growth in the, in the spring going into the summer with that tall rye. We'll mow that rye or till it out or kill it out. And then we'll prepare that normal blend where I'm putting 50% of one forage on one side and one on the other, which is a lot more like we're doing on the third property. But again, fresh new plots here. We're putting the ultimate blend in of beans, brassica, and then adding those cereal grains. We're gonna to top dress that, actually drill it right into the beans. We expect only about 20% loss of the beans uh, going into the early part of September by drilling into this. And uh, we'll have a super blend out here for the deer on a new food plot. Now we're finally at our third property here. And this is the one, this is the fourth year I've had this property. So we're into our typical rotations and the typical fall planting that I would recommend. Now in the past, I've used a mixture of tillage radish, oats, peas, oats, and beans early. This year I decided to go with our early planting on the one half of our plots, it's going with a straight bean. So we used about 75 pounds per acre. And with the no-till drill and the Genesis drill that we're using, the, uh, the beans are just beautiful out here. They're coming in great. Uh, we haven't had rain since we planted, but the soil is most and moist, so we've got a great germination. So a lot different on this land versus the first property that we can't use um, chemicals on and herbicide. The second property we weren't able to get into until June to start spraying when the weeds were already three feet high, four feet high. And on this property, we're into our normal rotation. So you can see we've used herbicide to control the weeds, using no-till to get the beans in. We didn't need the moisture to even germinate, great germination rates. So I have beans on this half, I have brassica on this half. So they're both drilled in, they're planted, they're ready to go. Difference with the beans right here is I'm letting these beans grow for five, six weeks. And then in early September, probably around Labor Day weekend or the, the following weekend, I'm gonna put about 150 pounds per acre of winter rye, maybe even 200 pounds. So if I get in here and there's 
30% soil exposure, 40% soil exposure, about 150 pounds per acre of winter rye will do the trick to not only fill in those areas where the beans might be hitting hard, they might be browsed on, um, and you know we want those beans to hold into late October and early November, but bottom line is I want a lot of green. Brassica is going to grow over here, more desirable soybeans right here that the deer will hit. They're going to hit them hard, especially when you get into mid-September, late September, get the last cutting of hay and alfalfa in the surrounding fields. The beans on everywhere else, every other farm field are turning brown. These beans will be green. They're going to get a lot of forage and uh, ag aggressive foraging uh, towards the middle and uh, latter part of uh, September. That's when that 150 pounds per acre and even up to 200 pounds per acre of winter rye will be coming in like a supporting army of green. That's going to fill in that lush base that would target about six weeks before the first frost, which you can count on about six, seven inches of growth with that rye during that time frame, maybe even eight. So while those beans are getting up in this height, that rye will be coming underneath. That'll actually take some pressure off the beans when the rye is young. Bottom line though, these brasses, brasses can grow being pretty much forage free. We want to get 30 inches of growth at least on this brassica portion so we can get a ton and a half, two tons of forage per acre on each food plot. And then each year I rotate these. So last year I was putting beans, a little bit of oats and some peas on this half or this half, you know, flipping back and forth. And uh, this year I'm going with a straight bean blend because we're getting a lot of volume and growth out of those beans compared to even the peas and the oats don't matter too much. I'll rotate these next year. Might use the straight beans uh, strictly next year, might even add some peas. The bottom line is I'm trying to target a lot of green on these food plots and I'm making sure that the diversity I have on both halves of the food plot will allow there to be a green base that can be foraged on without interruption from day one of the season all the way to day 99 or 100, whatever it is, gets into early January. So I want there to be a heavy amount of forage on this, on the greens and available the entire season. Now, if I had a little bit more acreage, I would add some corn, and then I would recommend some beans after that, early planted corns and beans so I could have that cereal grain in. But I can accomplish a lot of attraction every day all the way through the season. That keeps the use of this food plot going all the way into the end of the season. Nothing has to change by day as long as I'm not spooking this out, which our redneck blind behind the camera now is actually completely hidden. You can't even see it from where I'm standing. We'll cut out some lanes. We can get into that without the deer even knowing we're getting in, even if they're 20 yards out here. And that's what I'm trying to do on every property. And each property is different. Can't use herbicide on the first one. We're still practicing rotations, using a heavy dose of rye to limit the weed growth on all our planting going into the spring. Have the new plantings where I'm putting beans and brassicas together on everything, and then I'll divide that in half and rotate the following year. And then we have this property we've been using for four years. I'm getting into 75 pounds of beans on one half, Brassica blend on the other half, we use Northwoods Whitetails. And then I'm adding just on the bean half over here, 150 to 200 pounds of winter rye per acre over the beans. In between the brassicas, the beans, and the rye, I'll have a full army of green forage working for me the entire hunting season. We're doing that on all three properties. Each one has a different application. And that's what I do with my clients too. I, I might recommend one thing to a property that's a mile away, something completely different over here. But bottom line, we're getting that green base, then the corn, and then finally at the tap those beans if needed. But the foundation is always green, and that's what we're focusing on in 2017. Been focusing on that for the past decade, maybe 15 years, and it works. We control that deer movement for the afternoon movement in the area, and it'll work for you if you try it too.